you approach the You toss the earrings into the beaker. You manage. It's not time. You toss the sickly yellow. You strike the blade of your sword against the flint stone. It sparks and the wick catches a light. You watch, fascinated, as the two unlikely objects melt under the heat of the magical flame. Somehow the mixture looks too thick to risk dropping the crystal in just yet. You stir the mixture carefully with a white feather. It soon dissolves in the hot liquid. You drop the crystal in and watch, amazed, as the green liquid slowly seeps into it. You flip through the, the first. Heed now these words, crystal, perfect, green is thy hue, restore, correct, guard well my form, preserve, protect. You recite the words correctly, line for line, and sure enough, only a brilliant emerald remains in the glass beaker. You quickly blow the flame out so as not to overheat the emerald and cause damage to it. Picking it up gingerly, you're amazed that the emerald took virtually no time at all to cool. As you direct the sun's light through the emerald at the snake, you behold a wondrous transformation. Before you now stands a magnificent winged horse. Thank you for freeing me. A horrid enchanter transformed me into that legless thing after I refused to be his steed. That was quite a gamble, to refuse an enchanter. True, but I could not have accepted, even if I had wanted to. For I am a disciple of the cloud, and can serve no land dweller. Disciple of the cloud? What does that mean? First, tell me of what you seek up here. You take a deep breath, then explain about the door of destiny, the gems of nature, and your present quest to locate the growth gem. So, you seek the air gem? Yes, that is right. You know of it? Most certainly. But you will not be able to reach it by any means available to you or any of your kind. I would gladly take you to it, but alas, the enchanter took and hid from me my bridle. Without it, we could search for a thousand years and still never find the cloud spirit. Where did he hide your bridle? I do not know. Perhaps a clue may be found in that blackguard's abode behind me. What is this spirit you speak of? The essence of what you seek. It passes through us as we grow, all through our lives, though few are ever aware of it. You will know soon enough when I take you to it. Thank you. 
you notice that some writing has been engraved into the wall. You read the inscription. In row of stones that number six, half and a pair from left to pick, well then my spell avoid the tricks. The engraving on the wall reads, In row of stones that number six, half and a pair from left do pick, quell then my spell, avoid the tricks. You hear footsteps approaching. Uh-oh, the enchanter has caught you in his lair. He twirls his hands, aims them at you, and then utters some words under his breath. You feel a tingling sensation all over your body as the enchantment attempts to transform you into whatever the enchanter has fancied. At the same time, you also feel the comforting energy of the emerald shielding you. The enchanter's twisted smile turns downwards. He scowls at you. There is a look of panic on the man's face. He does not dare breathe. I hereby order you to depart from Kalima forever, never to trouble its citizens again, lest you were in the fullness of my wrath. The enchanter looks baffled. You sigh inwardly and try again. Leave. If you come back, then you will get it. The Enchanter nods frantically, as much as he can without cutting his own neck on your sword edge. He gestures quickly with his hands. You need to be standing where the horse. Why do you choose to serve this cloud spirit? It is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. I was not aware that I had one. All of us have a destiny. Some are predestined, others are determined by choice. I believe yours to be of the latter. You don't have any... It would be too dangerous to use the magic carpet near those jagged rocks. You can't... You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet rises into the air again. The carpet begins to descend. You bend over and hold the emerald above the stone so that the sun's light channels through it. Incredible! The rock has transformed into a silver-studded bridle. You take the bridle.
You unroll the magic carpet, lay it on the ground, and sit on it. The carpet begins to rise skyward. As you reach down to get the carpet, it vanishes into thin air, without even so much as a puff of smoke. You slip the bridle over the horse's head. It whinnies its approval. Come, Come climb, climb upon, upon my back. back. Hold on, this will be a little accelerating. The disciple of the cloud gracefully soars high into the sky. You grip the reins tightly and hold on for dear life as he swoops and dips between the clouds. After a time, he draws near to a thick patch of luminous mist. As you pass through it, the horse sets itself down, seemingly on top of a cloud. It is all right. You can dismount now. Believing that you have finally lost all sense of reason, you dismount and prepare for a very long drop. Uh, in King's Quest 1, we stood on clouds without, you know, being told to. I believe I just missed something. You have come for the Air Gem, or the Growth Gem, as it was once named by the Ancients. It has not been termed thus without reason, for one who would have the gem as his own must prove himself grown and thus worthy of it. Meaning, no disrespect. Uh, mm. Cloud Spirit. Thank you. You must agree, Cloud Spirit, that I am a man fully grown thus fulfilling your prerequisite. A howling wind deafens you momentarily, though you feel nothing on your skin. The cloud spirit speaks again, a little more forcefully. It is not enough that you have grown in body. That much is evident. It must be proven that you have also grown in both mind and soul. So on these shall you be tested. Tested? Those who bear the burden of king are expected to possess certain qualities. Your actions will be judged against the weight of these. It shall be seen whether you are deserving of your title. It shall be seen whether you are worthy of the growth gem. After a moment of silence, the cloud spirit intones, Behold your first test. The mist around you clears, and you find yourself in a familiar place. This is Daventry, and furthermore, you are a child again. A slight dizziness overwhelms you for an instant. How strange, you no longer recall anything past this moment in time. It is as if this is happening again for the first time. Even stranger, you are still vaguely aware that you are undergoing a test of some kind, though for what purpose, you cannot fathom. But look! It is Malvolio, your best friend. The two of you are deeply engrossed in a game of bat and ball. Just your liege? Um, no, your majesty, King Edward, sir, I'm his sire. Which of you two boys threw that ball? The one that just happened to land on my head? This may not be the best of
you eagerly point the finger at Malvolio. He hit the ball over the wall, after all. That's not what I meant. Behold your son. Uh, I want to redo this. Well, I got a little ways to go back. You notice that you read the you hear footsteps approaching. Uh-oh, the Enchanter has caught you in his lair. He twirls his hands, aims them at you, and then utters some words under his breath. There's not enough... You can't. The carpet begins to. You been in You t You un As you reach So the issue has been that when I push the push to hold but or uh, push to speak button, it acts as if I'm clicking a bunch of times which cancels all the text and you lose stuff. So uh, for the next bit I'm not gonna be talking. You slip. Call. Call. Hold on. The disciple of the cloud gracefully soars high into the sky. You grip the reins tightly and hold on for dear life as he swoops and dips between the clouds. After a time, he draws near to a thick patch of luminous mist. As you pass through it, the horse sets itself down, seemingly on top of a cloud. It is all right. You can dismount now. Believing that you have finally lost all sense of reason, you dismount and prepare for a very long drop. And find yourself standing on a cloud.
Why do you choose to serve this cloud spirit? It is my destiny, and I must fulfill it, just as you must fulfill yours. I was not aware that I had one. All of us have a destiny. Some are predestined, others are determined by choice. I believe yours to be of the latter. How is it possible that I can stand upon thin air? Such are not the questions you should be asking. You have come for the Air Gem, or the Growth Gem, as it was once named by the ancients. It has not been termed thus without reason, for one who would have the gem as his own must prove himself grown and thus worthy of it. Meaning, no disrespect. Uh... Mm. Cloud Spirit. Thank you. You must agree, Cloud Spirit, that I am a man fully grown, thus fulfilling your prerequisite. A howling wind deafens you momentarily, though you feel nothing on your skin. The Cloud Spirit speaks again, a little more forcefully. It is not enough that you have grown in body. That much is evident. It must be proven that you have also grown in both mind and soul. So on these shall you be tested. Tested? Those who bear the burden of King are expected to possess certain qualities. Your actions will be judged against the weight of these. It shall be seen whether you are deserving of your title. It shall be seen whether you are worthy of the Growth Gem. After a moment of silence, the Cloud Spirit intones... Behold your first test. Anyone else know if his teeth are horizontal? The mist around you clears, and you find yourself in a familiar place. This is Daventry, and furthermore, you are a child again. A slight dizziness overwhelms you for an instant. How strange, you no longer recall anything past this moment in time. It is as if this is happening again for the first time. Even stranger, you are still vaguely aware that you are undergoing a test of some kind, though for what purpose, you cannot fathom. But look! It is Malvolio, your best friend. The two of you are deeply engrossed in a game of bat and ball. Address your liege? Um, no, your majesty, King Edward, sir. I mean, sire. Which of you two boys threw that ball? The one that just happened to land on my head? You summon all your courage and speak up. Your majesty, if you please. It was I who hit the ball over the castle wall. It was my fault completely. Please don't punish my friend. The king eyes you carefully. You wonder if you are now in serious trouble. I would not punish one for something so trivial. However, I will see you play your game elsewhere. Away from here. Y yes sire One more thing, my young fellow. You have demonstrated good character today by taking the blame for your friend. The finest knights in this realm demonstrate their compassion by protecting others, even if that should mean putting themselves at risk. I find that to be a rare quality in the many I meet. When you have grown up, I hope to see you again, perhaps in my service. Thank you, Your Majesty! Behold your second test! You feel yourself growing older, more so than before the tests began. Again, dizziness overcomes you, your memory of the previous test fades, and in its place, your mind is filled with the knowledge of everything that has since come to pass. 
This includes, unfortunately, the dreadful misfortunes which have plagued Daventry since the coming of the terrible three-headed dragon. To make things worse, your 17-year-old daughter has been demanded as its latest sacrifice. In return, it will not harm the rest of the population until the next demand. You would go forth to destroy the dragon yourself, but you no longer have the heart for such quests. Never have you felt so forlorn, so frail. You fear that given the choice, you would do anything to rectify the situation. A charming view. No wonder you come here so often. You. I will see you hanged for this intrusion. Guards! Guards! Calling them will do you no good. For even if they come, they will find their king speaking to only the air he breathes. A pox on thee! Who are you? My name, my true name, has been heard by none for an eye on a millennium. It is enough that you know me as the father. Then say what you have come to say and be gone. <laughs> you never were one for small talk. You cursed my family. As a result, that dragon is now loose upon the land and one of my children was kidnapped. Now that is not quite the truth. Do you deny your involvement? Not at all. It is just that you have omitted so much. Speak and be gone. Very well. I want your crown. You cannot believe what you have just heard. This vile creature has caused untold misery throughout your land for nearly 18 years and has now infiltrated your castle just to ask that you hand over your authority to him? Of all the outrageous. Is that what this is all about? You want to rule Daventry? <laughs> What would I want with a puny little kingdom when in a few short years I will have more power than Legendemore himself? No, I want only the thing you wear atop your head. Your crown. It is an essential part of my plan. Without it, my efforts to prepare for the ascension will have been in vain. I have waited far too long to be deterred from it now. If you need it that badly, you could have just taken it. You had plenty of opportunities. Are you completely ignorant of the legends of your predecessors? None can possess the crown of the first king unless it's given. If you think for one moment that I would... Before you speak further, consider this. In exchange for what I ask, I shall leave my curse and all that it entails from you and your blighted land. You shall have both it and your family restored in full. Minus your title, naturally. Your mind reels at these words. For almost two decades, a countless number of innocent people have suffered under the afflictions Daventry has had to endure. So many more people would continue to suffer indefinitely, notwithstanding the pain you feel over your own family's misfortune. With a simple statement, you could put an end to it all. Unconditional acceptance and final act of defiance makes sense. Provisional acceptance. I don't know what severing the lifeline means. To give you my crown would signify a change of leadership. So says the law of this land. It also says that the crown is to be worn only by those with the highest regard and intent for Daventry. So, to give it to such a vile being as you would betray the honor and memory of all the past kings who have worn it. No, I will not do it. Not even for the sake of your family? There are some principles for which even one's family must be sacrificed. The man appraises you as a scientist would a unique specimen. 
What an intriguing set of morals you have, King Graham. I almost look forward to the time when you will put aside your obligations here and seek me out. I have foreseen that we shall meet again. Behold your third test. Once again, you feel yourself age. You are many years older now, though still, thankfully, King of Daventry. As before, the knowledge of the previous test ebbs from your mind. This time, however, it is filled with a greater knowledge of all that has come to pass thus far. Many years have passed. Your children, once heirs to your throne, have forged their own paths in other kingdoms. Fortunately, chance has seen fit to fill the vacuum. Following the restoration of the Mask of Eternity, Daventry now has a new champion. How do you feel? I am deeply honored, sire. All right. Now, how do you really feel? Scared out of my wit, sire. You smile and feel the lines in your face stretch. You hope you'll get used to it when the true time comes. You know what they've been saying. About my decision, that is. The people question my ability to perform the duties when I have another higher obligation. I believe that I can attend to both with the utmost equity. You do not deny that this obligation may arise at any moment. Perhaps taking you away from this country at a time of great need? Of course not, sire. But I shall deal with that troll, as they say, when I cross that bridge. And there is the matter of you not being of royal birth. That does not sit comfortably with some of the nobles. The qualities of truth, light, and order can shine from even the most impoverished of souls. Nobility is defined through one's actions, not one's lineage, your majesty. You cannot help but smirk. For a man who had once lived as a peasant, he speaks extremely well. Kneel. Your sword. By virtue of your bravery, loyalty, and good conscience, I have chosen you to be my first knight. Thus you are my successor and heir to this throne. Arise, Sir Connor of Daventry. In an instant, you find yourself standing before the Cloud Spirit once more. You also notice that it is starting to get dark. You have demonstrated your sound understanding of compassion, honor, and loyalty. These attributes transcend the mind and speak of the soul within you. Growth continues unabated throughout the lives of all living things. You have grown much, learnt a great deal, and will continue to grow in all ways. You are judged worthy of the air and growth gem. You take the growth gem. As you feel the knowledge of the last test fade from your mind, the cloud beneath your feet begins to evaporate. You'd better get out of here quickly, Graham. Finally, your flight comes to an end. You hope that it will be quite a while before you take to the air again. Where would you like me to land? On the ground would be fine.
take this sugar cube. It will protect against the poisonous growth of this land. Fare thee well. You notice you have lost a few things during your descent, mostly all that paper you were carrying. You are not concerned, though, as long as you don't get into trouble for littering. As dusk sets in and the pallid moon rises above the darkened horizon, you recall the door of destiny's words regarding the third gym, through swampy mire, in lone dark castle. Then you remember the great Neptune's disquiet reluctance to speak of Kalima's lord. You sense a growing unease that this final gem may not be the easiest to acquire. 